your host Terrence Moore and I'm just here to basically give you all another trip to another place. So uh, today we're going to be working with acrylics again. Uh, this is the second episode and I thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for your responses on the website. Um, I thank you all for your wonderful comments and uh, we're going to definitely just keep going with this. So um, like I said we're going to start out with um, a bird this time. And, and as always, I'm going to just basically quiz you all and see how well versed you are. So I'm not even going to say what this is, but I will give the answer online to the website. So, um, you know, just to basically keep you people on your toes out there, all my fans and all the artist lovers around the world. One thing I love about birds is, is that they're always in the act of something. They're always doing it. And uh, they always have plenty of excitement with them as well. So a lot of the pictures that you see um, throughout history of birds, they're always doing something incredible. And as you can see now, uh, what I'm doing is, is basically just light, lightly putting down my foundation. You, know, you don't have to make a solid commitment in putting down something so permanent so fast. Take your time. Take your time and just brush in some nice light strokes. And if you have to draw it out, you know, draw out everything in a nice pencil. You know, do that lightly as well. Um, I've been painting and airbrushing and drawing since I was, well, I've been drawing since I was two years old. And, um, you know, that's just one of the special things about art. You know, you can start at the youngest age or the oldest age. I'm still learning stuff. so. You know, don't for once think like, you know, I'm this guy that just has it all together. No, I'm still always trying to reinvent myself and learn more things. So, I urge you all to do that as well. And some people might be getting a close idea, but I can go ahead and tell you, no, nah, you don't. You know, no. Now you might. And I can guarantee you some of you people are still going to get it wrong. It's all about technique and stroke and just experiment. You know, the one thing about it is though, if you're going to experiment with different brushes and so forth, learn your brushes. Because if you learn your brush, then you know what it's capable of. You know what angles make this stroke, what angles make that stroke. So those are just some of the key components to teaching yourself how to um, paint. You know, you can pick up stuff from all types of artists around the world. but I promise you, if you try them all yourself, who has to teach you anything? You know, because basically what teaching is, is just um, learning something from somebody that has already put in the work for you. They know all the shortcuts, they, are, they know all the little um, ways to make something a lot easier for you in the art world. Now, saying that, that don't mean either <laughs> not to go to school because, you know, going to school and going to college and further your education, oh man, that, you can't trade that for nothing. I don't know anybody yet that has regretted that. So definitely get an education out there. 
You know, I have um, three kids, three wonderful kids, and each one of them has some type of a artistic talent. All three of them draws. Go figure. But um, that's the wonderful thing about kids is they will experiment with anything as long as they feel as though it's right and it's fun. So, as, as you can see, I'm just um, imitating the strokes of the feathers. Why am I doing that? Well, basically I'm doing that because I want to also keep this foundation in with this bird. Um, as you can see, I um, already worked on some of the background and now I'm actually going to some color. Um, one thing you got to always remember, step outside your own boundary. You know, don't worry about uh, is this right or this wrong, experiment. You won't know if it's right or wrong until you do try. So, you know, and when it comes to art, hey, you know, sky is the limit. So, you know, make sure all your strokes are, are, are vivid and light. Remember, don't commit too strongly to it. Because if you do that, then committing too strongly to it is hard to clean up. As you can see, we're working on different uh, areas of the bird. Some of the different patterns of the way his wings are made. And like I said, to find out what bird I'm actually painting, go to the website artmindsoul.com and uh, you'll be able to find out where I found it from, the interesting facts about this bird, and uh, maybe some people already know. So the ones that do know, also visit the website and let me know what you think. Um, as you can see, I um, use a, a bigger stroke brush is because I've learned this brush. So, you know, you might have to try something different, you know, figure out what brushes work for you the best so that you can get what you're looking for out of each stroke.
And as you can see, you can mix up the colors. Using a, a brighter orange here. Just add some contrast into the wings. some white areas there to already kind of cast as a mood of highlights. started with putting some detail in and uh, basically what I'm doing now is edging out the bottom area of the bird uh, around his legs um, you know make sure you have a fine straight edge brush for that something that you know like this it has a, a kind of a straight flat edge to it I think that's a little bit better and uh, as you can see I put a nice little amount of paint on it and I just edge it up from there. Even with edging, start light and then end up dark. See how that brings out the definition around the legs. And just for a little bit of tidbit about me, some more info about me. Um, I've painted a little bit of everything. Um, I currently now do a lot of um, home interior design work. Um, to where I go in and do wall murals and things of that nature. So there's a lot of stuff that um, I've, I've picked up over the years um, just by trying to experiment things. So um, you know, never limit yourself. Never think that you can't make money now without an agent and all that other stuff. You know, I don't have an agent right now currently, um, but you know, all those things do come in handy. So, never exclude anything, always do your research on it, and then try it out for yourself. And just paint everything you see you know that's the best advice I can give to anyone about how to make things look real and so forth if you see a shadow somewhere paint that shadow in there but try and imitate exactly what you see don't throw in your own additives and stuff like that because recreating a wheel when you don't have to only hurts your, your detail
Now you can make a shadow more um, more dominant than it is in the actual photo. So that is some good things about being an artist. Um, you can show more attention to certain areas when the light and darkness in the real original photograph didn't show that. So those are some good things. I think um, of doing a lot of painting on um, presenting itself to artists to do. But a lot of artists try not to do that. You know, they shy away from um, things that they could try and experiment. And I, I see it like this, if you're at home by yourself, hey, you know, no one else knows you've done that bad picture in 1972. You know. See here, I just mixed in some red and you know, give it more of a shadow to the under area. Just adding more detail in areas that you see. Don't overdo anything. My advice is I would rather underdo it than overdo it the first time. Because if you underdo it, you can go back and add. And sometimes the best paintings are the ones you can just sit back on weeks and weeks in and look and add a little bit, add a little bit, add a little bit, add a little bit until you feel as though, hey, it's perfect. This is what I want. So don't never try and force yourself to rush to finish anything for anyone. You know, if it's a client you're doing a painting for and they're trying to rush you and just ask them, hey, would you rather it come out perfect and we not rush? Or would you be rather rush and hope that it comes out the way you want? And it's still going to take more time to fix. So it's always best to do it right the first time. Now, I have a very unorthodox way of doing everything. I love semi-realism and a lot of abstract but I love when they both of them clash together the most I can't wait to y'all um, find out what kind of bird this is I think a lot of people are going to be shocked and be like, oh man, I thought that was a... And I can tell you all this, it's not a flamingo. So uh, just make sure um, if you're thinking about what kind of bird this is, except flamingo. Nope. see I have um, actually started on the um, background area now and, uh, as you can see 
I told you before, I'm very unorthodox, so uh, traditional methods and colors a lot of people use, I try and always do something different. So uh, just remember to always be original. Experiment, experiment. Those are the key words. Because the more you try different things, the more you learn. I promise you, you won't regret it. Backgrounds are the most interesting, manipulated places to use on a portrait. So always take a gamble in that area just to see what comes about. Remember to be adventurous with your colors. Be bold in areas of where there's a lot of darkness. Um, this will help carry you to your next famous idea. And yes, I said famous. And the reason being is because, you know, you can be famous in your own. Good to have the worldwide attention and accolades, but I do believe we can all be famous right in our own home, amongst our family, our friends. You know, you get more enjoyment out of it that way. Welcome back, and um, as you can see, um, I've got the background finished now, and I um, also am working into these areas here, um, the different sections of the muscles and where the feathers and, and so forth overlap and break. So, um, you know, you can basically just um, always home in onto the strong points of the picture.
and as you can see, I um, added kind of a, a semi-realism, but more of an abstract to the wings and feathers. So kind of like far off, it'll look and appear as though one thing, and then close up, it appears another. And I hope you learned a little bit today um, on basically putting a, putting together a bird. And remember what kind of bird you got to go to artmindsoul.com to find out. So um, just um, make sure you stay tuned in to the AMS show, Art, Mind, and Soul. And always remember, when you're an artist, sky's the limit.